And you know, one of the reasons people don't like to read the Bible is because it's very convicting. <laughs> you know, we see how we're supposed to live, and then we look in the mirror, and we realize we fell short, and instead of just humbling ourselves and getting down on our knees, we say, yeah, I think I'll read the sports page. <laughs> What's going on in the basketball playoffs, right? Like, you know, you just keep putting it off. Maybe I'll go get my teeth drilled. Because I want to avoid that conviction that Holy Spirit brings. Like, no, it's not. The honor of kings is revealed by how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God says. And I'll just draw a comparison because you all know that I'm still in the workforce and I'm always on appointments and going to meeting but many unsafe people who are successful because, you know, our firm helps them invest the money. So they're typically successful people. That's how they got the money, right? And, and it's very black and white, very down, you know, get to the point. What do you got? You know, you'll walk in, what do you got? Like, hurry up, get to the point. And, um, you know, that's not how God is. But why wouldn't you pray before you go in there and say, Lord, I want to know exactly the right words to say to this person because I believe what I can do is going to help him. I'm not trying to sell him something. I believe that the services that we have can help them. But I want to do it in a way that he can receive it or she can receive it, not just my standard pitch, right? Nobody wants to be pitched. They want you to care about what they are, what, what, what their life is about. They want you to listen, right? You know that saying, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's missing in our culture right now, isn't it? So everything that the Bible teaches us should cause us to prosper in the business world because it's, it's based on character. It's based on doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do and not bowing to the pressure of a sales manager. You didn't make your numbers. You didn't make your numbers. Go back into the hiding place of his glory. Pray and say, Lord, help me find favor with the people that I meet. I'll do my part. I'll go out and, and go on the appointments and I want you, when I open up my mouth, I want you to speak through me, right? Yeah. So verse 28 is kind of like this picture of a life without prayer. I lived it for a long time. I thought I was praying. I wasn't not ever praying, but it wasn't the understanding of prayer that I have now. And I've said it before, but you know, my wife is very strong in that gift. That's, that's one of the things that she's helped me realize. Because I would say, I think we should do this. And she'd say, what did the Lord say? I'm like, I don't have to bother him with this one. This is easy. It's like, no, that's, that's a really good way to live. What did the Lord say before you do anything? Because most things are not that urgent that you can't just wait. And it's amazing what he'll show you when you pray and you just ask. So that's part of that living in the hiding place of his glory is that that's where I'll hear, hear the right voice, right? So, you know, that verse from the Psalms that says it's, it's vain to stay up late and work hard because unless... The Lord builds the house, you're just going to labor in vain. So that's a good word for 2021, right? Because there's a swirl going around about us in the atmosphere right now. People are very disappointed. A lot of Christians are very disappointed about the way the, way the election has gone up till now. And um, I don't want anybody to think that I'm not praying for that. I am praying for that. But I do think that we do have to also honor the, the rule of law in America, right? That's, that's what makes us great. We honor the rule of law. And, and if it was, there was fraud involved, you, God will show us where the evidence is. That evidence, evidence will get presented in a court. And that's how, that's how it works here. And you should be happy about that. Because you can go to other countries called banana republics, right? And it's not selling clothes. We have rights here. And that's what makes us great, is that we honor the rule of law. That we're not just rioting in the streets. And look... I believe it's true that the church has just gotten too comfortable and bought into this lie that, that we're not relevant for the culture, that this is just the theory that we talk about here, but you can't apply it on your job. I mean, come on, really? How come Paul stayed being a tent maker? Jesus was a carpenter till he was 30, right? Like, these people all were working, fishermen, tax collectors, all people out in the market among the lost all the time. Even Paul, as this great scholar that he is with all this ministry, when you read about him in, in uh, Ephesus, he was going on his lunch break from his job. He was making tents. And, th and they would come to him and say, can we borrow your, your canvas uh, vest that you had on? I'm not a vest, I can't think of it, like a smock almost, because he would keep his tools in there. Because we know you're going to go teach in the Hall of Tyrannus during your lunch break, but there's sick people that we want to want to see healed, 
and we can't get them to you, so we want to bring your smock and your bandana, your handkerchief and your apron to them. And they would bring those work clothes and lay them on people, and those people would get healed. It was while he was working. It's not supposed to just happen in church. Yes, Lord, let it happen here, but let it happen everywhere we go. Because we're carrying the presence of God with us, and we can't ever th think, oh, no, he wouldn't want me to use it here. He wants you to be careful how you use it. All right, And, and, and let's not bring a reproach on the Lord by misrepresenting him, but that's why the honor of kings is revealed by how thoroughly they search out the deeper meaning. But, but the prayer list is part I didn't read yet, but it says, verse 28 of Proverbs 25, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Okay, that's a very profound truth from the day we started this church in 1999. I, this is one of the most highly quoted verses that have come out of my mouth since we've been out here. Because we forget sometimes that when you look at what's listed as evidence of the Holy Spirit, the fruit, right? The fruit that the Spirit is operating in you is love, joy, peace, patience, right? You know kindness. And then there's that last one in the King James. It was called temperance, right? Self-control. Boy, if, if there's any group of people that should be able to defer to the power of God in us in the Holy Spirit and say, give me control so that I'm not this person who's not ruling my spirit because a city with the walls broken down means you're open for attack. And that's why the devil just loves to get people emotionally hijacked. Or back in my college days, we always wanted to get the girl drunk because we knew if we could get her, I wasn't saved then, okay, I'm not trying to tell any bad stories, but, but we knew that if we could get the girl drunk, her, her guard would go down, right? It was diabolical, it's what the devil does. You know, whatever. I won't go into that. But look, the devil will twist all the desires in our heart uh, to, the, to the ungodly side. Desires aren't bad. They just have to be under the rulership of the Lord. Yeah. Right? That's what James says in James chapter 1. We, we fall because we're drawn away by our desires and enticed. But the desires aren't bad in and of themselves. Because what about William Wilberforce? He had the desire to see slavery end in England. <laughs> That's a good desire. Took him 30 years against all odds. Three days before he died, he saw it happen. Wow. Amazing. So it's not the desires that are bad. It's are they sanctified? Wow. Meaning, have they been put through the lens of Scripture? Have, have we lived it out? Have we walked it out among other people? Like, who, who would you ask for a pastoral reference? And what would they say? Right? That's a good way to think about this. Like, what's my reputation? Am I late every time I'm, I'm called to a meeting? Well, okay, I mean, that's not the end of the world, but it's probably not the highest standard that we would want to live by, right? How about your boss? What would your boss say in your annual review? You got a toot, man. You got a bad attitude. No, I don't want that. I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to be carrying the Holy Spirit with me. I don't want to be hijacked by emotions and say things they're going to use against me later. So, Lord, help me not be this guy who I have no rule over my spirit. And then I'm open to attack. So I go into that hiding place of his glory and I say, Lord, I really need help in this area because I'm getting all riled up about whatever this thing is. Or the, the betrayal that happened. Or somebody said something on Facebook and accused me of being whatever. That's where you go into that closet of prayer and you say, Lord, remove these wicked thoughts from my mind right now. Because we can think of some pretty ugly things to do to people, can't we? Yeah. 